Howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome. All right, as the title suggests, we're going to move this into a full-time series, and yeah, we'll explain a few things along the way. Um, first off, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It's just a matter of hitting that little red button that says subscribe. Um, a large percentage, um, around 80% of the people who view my videos are not subscribed. Um, whether you do the notification bell or not, doesn't matter up to you. But at least subscribe. Um, it does help. Um, we're getting close to the channel reaching the ability to go back to being monetized and it's just a matter of watch hours which doesn't make a whole lot of sense but with all the scammers that have ruined YouTube over the last couple of years um, yeah it's just one of those things so this series plain and simple the only thing that is going to be not free is going to be using my simple multiplayer steam template if you're not familiar with my template it is something that I sell through my discord channel you send twenty dollars US currency through PayPal it's a minor price to pay for something that is indispensable to me and if you're not familiar with what it actually is and I mention it in a lot of my videos it's my sole source of income right now is making money from that if you were to just hit play you're gonna see that says go connect to steam dummy and a white square um, that's just gonna happen because you're not in the right format here so let's actually hit stop and we're gonna run it as a standalone game and you'll see exactly what you're gonna get whenever you get the simple multiplayer steam template okay when it comes up you'll notice that um, you have your steam username and avatar and it says access the Steam community while playing shift tab that does work so you're actually using Steam functionality here to be able to join and create and host and create games here if you just hit single player it goes directly into the map and you can play by yourself and you can hit escape and either resume game or go back to the main menu if you want to find a game that's already hosted by somebody you click on find nothing shows up you hit find lobby it'll search for 10 seconds if anything shows up you'll have a, uh, the name of the the hosted game and a join button just click the join button and poof you're right in there If you want to host your own game just put in a, a name here whatever you want it to be and hit make and boom there you go you have a multiplayer game that your friends can join and as soon as they join they'll pop up into the map and they can walk around and do nothing with you so the rest of the game is entirely up to you. The simple multiplayer steam template just allows you to get there and allows other people to get there with you. Main menu and escape. So other than that, everything else that I'm going to put into this project is going to be free through the UE4 marketplace. Um, if there's some little tidbits of things, I might throw them into my Discord channel and the BBG demos page. Um, scope mask, binocular mask, things like that. Um, but I'm going to try to stick to as much free content as possible so that you don't have to dish out any more money to get started with actually creating your first game. And this game project is not going to be that elaborate. It's just going to be something that will allow you to get a feel for creating a game in a multiplayer environment without it absolutely just destroying your brain. Alright, the only thing that I've done other than create a fresh project and um, based off of my simple multiplayer steam template if you do not know how to do that I've got other videos that I have done just for that I will release another video coming up soon that will just be creating your first project with the simple multiplayer steam template and how to go ahead and get going with that and also cleaning up and you notice I've changed the colors uh, to change the color of uh, a folder right click on the folder and set color create a new color and you can make it whatever you want um, that looks lovely we'll assign that one to be that light blue color blueprint folders um, can be blue things of that nature um, go into your player character start organizing things getting it cleaned up based on movement modes 
um, whether it's basic functions like starting up or escape menu or view change or what have you you can start organizing your your actual folders and make them neat and organized as you're going along so um, the other thing was going into the mannequin folder animations and third person anim BP the orange one and cleaning this up so that it looks so much neater and easier to use Again, if you want to see a video on how to do all this just let me know and I will do it uh, same thing with the uh, default graph nice and clean and neat everything's good to go so let's get started with creating our first map and we'll do something simple in here to show some basic functionality on what and why things need to be replicated and so forth so let's go ahead and go to file actually first before we get started let's make sure that we hit edit and go to editor preferences and ensure that um, asset editor open location is main window and loading and saving over here on the left enable autosave is turned off well why don't you want autosave because if you rely on an autosave feature you're doing it wrong the save all buttons right there hit it when you're in a blueprint the compile and save buttons are right there use them you are the master of your own save so let's go ahead and get started with a new map here we'll do file up here in the top left new level and we're going to use a VR basic and I'm just going to go in here and use a right click to pan around the first thing I'm going to do is grab the ball in the left hand side and we're going to shift left click on the bottom cube here and I'm going to hit delete and we also have a pyramid we're going to hit delete on that we don't need them grab these guys and make sure that we select the four arrow direction here for moving the items around and drop that below next thing is going to be creating a folder here for our player save and just right click anywhere create folder and map stuff we're just going to throw all the rest of our stuff in here we'll grab our player start we'll left click on it and just drag it and drop it in the player save actually player start not save dumbass <laughs> uh, the joy of getting older and then we'll grab the rest of it and we'll throw in the map stuff and this is just to keep everything neat and clean now player start I'm gonna go ahead and reposition it so that I've got it in this corner and I'm gonna duplicate them and put them in all four corners so we'll just move them here by the transform location we can type in negative 750 hit tab negative 750 hit tab and 97 I'm just gonna put them nice and neat in the corner and we want to put another one over here so I'm just gonna hit control C and control V to copy and paste and if you watch the numbers on that transform over here you can see by sliding it around those numbers are updating we're just gonna put them at 750 then the next thing we want to do is we can scroll in or move in here you can see the arrow blue arrow is facing there so we're gonna use a rotate here to rotate our, our object 90, 90 degrees so it's facing inboard and then we're going to take the same one and go back to our movement control C and control V to pop another one in and again one at 750 750 and then rotate it 90 degrees is it necessary to have four not really but at least two is good and we'll do the same thing control C control V and put the fourth one in at 750 rotate now I'm going to go ahead and have one more thing to do here go to our world settings and if you don't have a world settings tab here go to your window up top and put a check next to your world settings and that'll make sure that this is here we're going to change our game mode override to third person game mode and then we're going to save this so we we'll hit uh, save all save selected now for me it defaulted into my maps folder and that's where we want to go and I'm gonna call this test map even though I've already got one I'm gonna save it over the top of it and then I'm gonna hit save all again 
then I'm going to click right here and change that back to selected viewport and there we have a map to play on now our test map is going to be where we're going to use for testing out features functions things of that nature and I'm going to show some examples of um, how to do things so that they replicate correctly and I'm going to show them incorrectly so we're going to go to the blueprints folder go to our player base and again I've already taken the time to clean this up clean it up as you want but I'm just going to find a nice little blank empty spot to work with and that's good now we don't really have much in the way of working with but let's go ahead and start with keyboard actually before we get started on that let's create something really quickly so we have a respawn point so we're going to create what's called a variable over here on the left under my blueprint you've got variables variables are something you're going to use a lot a lot so let's click on variable and that's going to create a new one that's plus variable and I'm going to call this spawn point and then I'm going to change the type of that component over here underneath variable name you got variable type we're going to change this to a vector really quickly boolean is yes or no essentially that's what it means it's a yes or no it's either true or false on or off whatever it is a yes or no solution and we're going to use those quite a bit here um, byte is an 8-bit number integer is a number without decimal points integer 64 don't have a damn clue I've never used it <laughs> float is a floating point number it means a number with a decimal point name is a name the string is a type of name text is just that text vector is a XYZ location rotator is more for a direction in a three-dimensional aspect transform is your vector and rotation and scale combined into one unit and we're going to use that too but we're going to start with a vector hit compile and save compile and save you're going to be hitting these two buttons quite a bit get used to it so this is an XYZ coordinate location so what I want to do is find my event begin play and in this case it's startup stuff and what I want to do is make a little bit of room here in my comment boxes and I'm gonna add in one more thing here and I'm gonna explain why I'll show why I need to do something after I do it wrong and why I have to do it a certain way so we have this right here and this is gonna fire off the event begin play means it's going to start as soon as you begin playing with this character and what it's doing here is throwing your heads up display in adding it to your viewport making sure you're in the right input mode making sure you have no mouse cursor and everything is good to go so the next thing we want to do is get a reference to our mesh the mesh if you look in our viewport tab is our character's model we want to know our character's model now we have a direction we have all kind of different coordinates here but let's go ahead and just grab a reference all we're gonna do is left click and drag this in and then we have a node here that we can use for a reference to our mesh we're going to drag from here and we're going to get world location so we want to know where that guy is in the world our mesh where are we in the world and I'm gonna go ahead and move it back over here getting clean and staying clean is very important okay now if I were to just go ahead and drag my spawn point in I'm gonna set I'm gonna set my spawn point to this location it is going to be wrong only partially the z-axis is going to be wrong and what I mean by that is why won't you line up hurt me I don't care um, this location is going to be at the foot of our character actually uh, the midpoint of our character instead of the foot of our character and as an example I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna create a function that we're gonna use or an event we're gonna start off with keyboard just type in the word keyboard and the number one and keyboard event there so now this is gonna be our input we're gonna press the number one key on our keyboard and something is going to happen in this case we're going to get a um, a teleport going we're going to set world location nope we're actually going to set our actor location 
and we're going to use our spawn point. So I'm going to grab this and just drop it on top of that yellow pin for the new location and just make it neat. So this is going to give us a teleport, so we'll just click on teleport. We're going to teleport our character back to our original spawn point where we entered the map. So if I hit play and I'm walking around and I hit 1, it puts me back there. So in this case it's correct. Sometimes when you're doing this for coordinates, the coordinate will actually put you in the, the middle of your character. You'll be sticking through the floor. In that case, we'll just fix it, and that's just a, a simple fix. So why do you want that? Well, what happens if you die and you need to get teleported back to your start location? You don't want to just revive yourself right there where you died. So having that is just a good little test for teleporting us back. Okay, so we know that that works. We have our spawn point, and we've created our first thing. That's great. All right, so some things are going to be replicated. Some things need to be replicated. Some things don't need to be replicated. Um, in the player stats folder, we have reference to our health, which is going to reflect our health bar. So we want to, let's create something new here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this, compile and save. And our first thing we're going to try to create here is to take damage. There's a lot of nodes that are already created that you can use whenever you're creating a project. And all you have to do is right click and start typing. Even if you don't know how to do something, it doesn't hurt to sit here and like, okay, what do I want to do? I want to know what to do whenever I take damage. So you type in damage. And first thing we see right here, ev event any damage. So we're going to do that. And it gives us an event that is run on server. But the fact is, it's going to let us know how to process when we take damage. So what we do is we want to get a reference to our health. So we get our health. And we want to subtract our health or our damage from our health. So if we drag off from our health and hit the minus key, do float minus float, which is you know basic sub subtraction here. Sorry, I'm still having some speech issues after my botched dental work. Um, so that's what we're doing here is we're going to take our health, subtract the damage from our health, and then we're going to set our health. Now why are we using a float? because it gives you know, this and that and everything else. It would be better if it was an integer, but um, Epic decided that um, um, damage should be done with a float instead of an integer. I don't know why, but that's what they chose. So when we take damage, it's going to do this. It's going to subtract the amount of damage from our health and set our current health to what that value is. So let's test that out. Let's go to our asset folder, and I'm going to create a new folder in here called Blueprints. So all I'm doing is right-clicking and then selecting New Folder, and Blueprints, and hit Enter to go into it. And then we're going to create a new Blueprint class, and it's going to be an actor. So a bunch of different things here, easy to get confused. We're creating a new actor for our world, and this is going to be called our Pain Pad. And then I'm going to hit enter to go into it. So what we want is a visual representation of where this pad is. So if you click on add component, what do I want to add? Well, there's some basic things I can add in here, like a cube. So I can add this cube in, but it's going to be too ugly and too big. So I'm just going to make that to be in the transform, the scale. I'm going to change that to 0.1 instead of 1. And going to make it smaller. It's going to stick into the ground a little bit. I'm not worried about that part of it. And I'm going to click off of it and then click back on to, it's that important, click off of it down here and then click on add component and type in, type in box and hit enter. And that's going to give us a box collision. And again, we're going to go to our scale and we're going to change it to 1.5, hit tab, 1.5, hit tab, and let's just do 0.5. And we're going to take this little yellow box and move it up to where it's sitting right on top, like that. Compile and save. 
We go in here, we don't need any of this stuff, so I'm just going to left click and drag over it and hit delete and get rid of all that stuff. Compile, save. Now, if you were to right click on your box collision or box here and select add event on comp component begin overlap, that's all we need for this one. Hit compile and save. And what we're trying to do here is from our other actor, we want to drag off from here. And it's going to be a cast to node. So cast to our player underscore base, which is the name of my player character. If you're using a different type of setup, this would be if you only want it to affect your player character, then you would use a direct reference to that. If you want it to be that any character, whether it's a bot or human, then you can just type in cast to character. But in this case, I'm specifically only wanting this to affect my player character, so that's why I went to my player character on the cast to node. So what are we going to do here? We're going to drag off this is the executable pin. We're going to drag off from the executable pin, and we're going to apply damage. How much damage? Well, okay. First off, we'll get to this. The damaged actor is going to be dragging off from this pin right here and going directly to the damaged actor base damage, we can create a variable if we want to, but I'm just going to input a value of 25. So every time our player steps on this box, it's going to inflict 25 damage. And I'm going to hit compile and save, and then I can actually close this. And go back into my map, and I'm just going to left click on the blueprint, drag it, drop it into the map, and it's going to go directly to the floor, but let's go to my details panel change my location to 0 and 0. So it's dead square in the middle of the map. Now if I hit play and watch my health bar, step on it, you can see my health just went down by 25. And again, and again, and again. But we have no death. No way of dying here. So as we keep doing it, we can actually check that value. And we can just drag off from our executable of set health and print string and then let's just give it a little bit of room here because we're going to drag from this green pin to the pink. It's going to automatically give us a conversion node and it's going to print out our current health. So I'll compile and save and let's run it one more time. So if I step on it, it's going to say in the upper left hand corner, I now have 75 health. Do it again, I have 50, 25, 0, negative 25, negative 50. Well, we don't ever want it to go below zero. So to keep it from going below zero, let's go ahead and delete that, we can drag off from this value right here and type in the word float if you don't know what the symbols are. And if our health, or in this case our float, comes back less than or equal to zero, we're going to do a couple different events off of this. So that's why I'm doing less than and equal to. Then we use a branch node. I'm click off of here. I'm going to press the B key and left click, and it's going to create a branch node for me. Connect that pen to here, and then connect this to here. This is acting like a question. Is our health less than or equal to zero? If it is true, we're going to do this. If it's not true, we're going to do that. So this is the question, and the variable that goes into it is the condition for the question. So in this case, we're going to start off with um, 'setting our health again, but we're going to set it to zero. We'll leave that to, to blank. Compile and save. And so that we know that we're doing it correctly again, let's run our print string. And let's plug that value in. So it's going to report back what our current health is every time we step on this pad or every time we take damage. So as we go in, yes, I know, Shift F1 for mouse cursor. Please go away. Thank you. Um, and now it's reporting back as zero. So that it reports back all the time. Let's drag from the faults to this as well. We're just wanting to report back and know what our health is. 
we can see on our health bar on the bottom right, but 75, that's 50, 25, 0, 0, 0. We can't go below 0 because every time we try, it's going to put it back at 0 anyway. So we can get rid of that stuff. And let's actually create a, a death sequence that we can plug in right here. Why don't you um, leave that in place? All right. So this is not going to be replicated, but we will replicate it. First thing, um, if you're following along and you don't want to do a lot of downloading of extra stuff, in the BBG demos page, I put in um, a couple different animations. One of them is going to be called Death One, and I'm going to go ahead and grab that animation. I'm going to go back to my regular folder. We're going to save all. Go to my characters folder, and I'm going to create a new folder in here called Animations. Go into it, and I'm going to find my animation on my folder, wherever I downloaded and saved it to. And I'm just going to left click on it, and um, I'm using three monitors here, so. You know, I, it's a lot easier actually to do a first person shooter if you're playing single player, but for multiplayer, um, it's just easy to go ahead and use um, the third person character example. So that's why a lot of people do it. So if you're doing a multiplayer, then it's best to go ahead and, and click on a load here to set up a different view so that you actually can see your character. Um, because whenever you're creating a first-person shooter versus a third-person shooter, um, when you see everybody else on the map, it's the easiest method is for everybody to be in third-person mode and just use a different camera. But... Um, the reason for is most first person assets only have a set of floating arms and just doesn't look quite as good and if you see another player there just could be a set of floating arms running around and it's just not going to work so that's why a lot of people use the third person but you can actually change your camera and actually use I've already got it set up to use a V key in this this project example to be able to use a first person view for a third person character he said the hybrid is to actually use both and set it up to where the player view sees whatever. But let's go ahead and drag our death animation in and I'm just going to drag it into this folder. And a window is going to pop up for FBX import. And I'm going to go ahead and select my UE4 mannequin skeleton and import. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit save all. Now we have a death animation that we can use. We'll cover ragdoll stuff in another video, but we just want to process the fact that we want our player to die and do a death animation. All right, so instead of building off from here, we're going to create a custom event. And I'm going to call this custom event, type in custom, and it's already on the right thing, so just hit enter. We're going to call this death. Again, this is not going to be replicated, but I will show you how to replicate that. It's really, really simple. So we just want to process the death event. So we can now type in death, and whatever we build in this custom event will then be fired off. So death, what are we going to do when we die? We're going to first off set our health to zero to confirm that we're we're already at zero. We should already be there, but it never hurts to have too many variables, right? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is our character movement. This is going to give us a lot of stuff to work with, but all I want to do is drag off from there and move a copy of that into my blueprint here. Make a pile and save. Goody an airplane flying over. What we want to do is drag from the character movement and set movement mode it defaults to none, and that's good, because that's what we're going to use here. We want to not be able to move as soon as we die. And then, this is going to be the simple method of doing things. Compile and save. We're going to grab a reference of our mesh. Throw it down here. And we're going to play an animation. 
and then we're going to connect our executables line this guy up and the animation we're going to play is death one not looping we don't want it to keep dying over and over and over and over again so we run this this right here and let's go ahead and just show that really quickly go into our map and we see our health drop health drop and boom we're dead I can no longer move I can pan my mouse around but I can't move my character he are dead so we naturally either want to respawn or don't want to respawn in this case we're gonna respawn so after we die what do we want to do well let's give us a, a delay so type in delay and that's gonna be well just that it's gonna give us a delay and I'm gonna change the value to 5 that's gonna be 5 complete seconds 5.2 will be 5.2 seconds so after a delay of 5 seconds what do I want to do hmm. let's um set actor location well like I said if you want a single-player first-person shooter I'd be more than happy to to do a, a parallel series on a first-person non multiplayer shooter I mean that's not a problem it's less complicated to do a, a single-player game than it is to do a multiplayer game by far so we're gonna set our spawn point to our our new location to our spawn point by plugging that in well with a first person right now if you go on the marketplace there's actually a, um, a free template or free asset for um, free for the month and look right here FPS assault rifle pack so if you want some cheap and easy guns to, to work with set of arms and everything you need to work with grab this pack right now while it is free and I'll actually show that in a, um, a separate video on how to do a first-person shooter using this right here and the first-person example won't be a multiplayer but you know hey it'll get the point across and it'll get you going with creating a, a first-person shooter. You can still use the um, the the bot anims and everything else, but um, yeah, we'll go from there. So just remind me on um, my Discord channel, and I'll I'll get on that. Um, all right, so we're going to set our actual location after five seconds. And after we do that, we need to set our animation back into a state that we we can use. So I'm going to grab my my mesh reference again. All right, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. So, what we want to do to get back into our regular animation is we want to set anim instance class, and we'll plug that guy in. Some of these things will actually carry over as well. Our new class, we're using our third person anim PP, and that's going to put us back into the ability to do normal animations but then we want to grab our character movement and we want to set our movement mode again and we want to change that from none to walking so after we die we can do all this but we also want to set our health back we want to set our health back to full which in our case is going to be 100 So now if we play it and we run around our health went down health went down again and now we're dead can't move but after a few seconds boom we're back to here and we can move around again our health is back to full and we can go back to killing ourselves so that's a quick death however it is not multiplayer replicated and to find out if something's working correctly in replication we can click on the button right here between play and launch. I think I, I don't think I've ever used launch. Um, so we'll click right here and change this number of players to two and use new editor window. Some new pie. 
Now, again, I have three monitors. If you're developing a game, I highly recommend that you have um, more than one monitor. Two at minimum, three at best. But short term, I'm just going to scale these down. I have, like I said, three monitors, so I would just move it over to a different monitor whenever I'm testing things, and then I don't have to worry about it. Alright, so this is my client that I'm controlling right now. You can see on the server screen, which is on the left, that our character is walking around. And I'm just going to park him here, and I'm going to move our server a little bit closer. So, on right, again, this is my client. You can see he is taking damage. But, now you can see on the server window, the client actually died. But, the client didn't actually see the animation. because it wasn't properly replicated. The server can see it, but the client cannot. At least the animation, the, the teleport, uh, teleport worked just fine. So let's put our client there, and let's move our server over. He's taking damage, and he's dead, and the client didn't see the server die. So this is where multiplayer replication comes into, and the dark arts, for those who don't know how to do it. And the reason why is there hasn't been the correct signals going across. And could I just do something with this right here? Eh, not really. Um, so I need to create another event, and I'm going to left click and hold the control key, key down, drag off from there, and just break that link. We're going to use that again in just a minute, but we need another custom event. So let's type in custom client death. So from here, what we need to do is under replicate, change that to multicast event, and we're going to do reliable. Whether it has to be reliable or not, eh. Because I have to have everything neat, I'm going to grab everything here and line it up correctly. So now, the client is going to Multicast. It's going to tell you, tell Bob and Fred and anybody that's connected in here, it's going to tell them, hey, I just died and I'm doing this. Alright, so we know that that whole sequence works, but now let's go back over to our death. And let's actually run this on server. And I'm going to run it as a reliable because everybody needs to know this correctly. Um, we'll work on um, making this more appropriate for streamlining later on, but for now, what we want to do is switch has authority. I, I don't get the name for it, but uh, or why it's called that. Uh, but essentially, what that's saying is, whenever I run this event, we're giving authority to this event. So that we need to call that event here, which would be client death. So that we're giving authority to this command to be able to be broadcast to everybody on the server. So if we compile and save now, what will happen is, and it sucks I have to resize these windows every time, and yes, I know that I can actually resize this in the editor, but it looks like crap. Um, because whenever I actually go back in and try and test the menus and everything else in a single format, then it's in that window size, and yeah. Without going too in-depth in it, I just don't like it, and it's unnecessary. All right, so client, server. On the left is the server. So as a server, we're going to watch. On the right, we're going to be as the client. We're going to step on here. And we're dead. Both people saw it. And the respawn. There we go. So it replicated correctly. And now let's go to the server. Let's try it with the server. And we're dead. Both people can see it. And there you go. The respawn happens. And there's much rejoicing. Now, how useful is that pain pad? Eh, you could use it in your map to set it up to... If a player walks through something, they, they take damage. It's a basic damage event. So... It's primarily I use it for testing. 
and ensuring that my replication is correct in my death animation, whether it's that or a ragdoll or whatever we apply to that, I know that I can test it and it works. If it doesn't, I can go back and troubleshoot and find out why it's not working. Now, another little thing here, since we're, you know, I try to keep these streams no more than about an hour, and for Mod Papa, if you like, after I finish this video here in a few minutes, I'll actually load up a, a project that is not multiplayer, and that will be using the FPS Assault Pack and the First Person Shooter example to create a basic um, system. If you haven't got the free for the month stuff, definitely get this right here, the Phoenix Anim Pack. I love it. I absolutely do. Um, I, it's made me want to go ahead and start looking at his other animations. But for sure, get it. And for sure, get it. The other three I don't really have a use for, but if you you do or don't or whatever, get them. They're free. Um, so what else can we do here? I'm going to go back to one player for right now and select a viewport. So, when replicating things is what people see as the dark art. And for the longest time it annoyed me because I didn't take the time to actually learn it. And it's essentially a matter of on things that require it to be replicated a certain way, the client has to say, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to run this sequence of events. And whatever I do, I need to get the authority from the actual server. So I have to run this, and I have to run on the server, and say, okay, whenever this happens, they have authority to run. When someone calls this custom event, we're giving authority to this script to actually run. So hopefully that makes sense. So if we wanted to actually do um, something based off of a keyboard event, let's actually create a simple method of creating something that will cause damage to the player, and then we'll get ready to wrap up for this video. Go to my assets, blueprints, and I'm going to create a blueprint class of... Hmm. Yeah. Let's just do this as an actor. Snowball underscore P for projectile. Typically you want to put the identifier like P for projectile, you want to put that in front of the name and we'll worry about that and show that in, in a different video. So what I want to do is add a component of a sphere. It's going to be huge. Way too big. Okay. But we can scale it down here, but we're going to also have problems when we call it in from the player. So let's actually scale it to maybe too small. Again, to find out, we can actually throw it on a map and take a look at it. It's kind of small, but I think that'll work for our purposes. We're making a snowball. So let's actually click on it and get rid of it off the map. We want to make this into a projectile. We want to throw a snowball. So we'll add a comp uh, component here and I'm going to make this into a projectile. So let's type in projectile or P-R-O-J for a projectile movement. And let's go ahead and give it speed of 500. It's going to be a little bit on the slow side. Um, the projectile gravity Let's change this to 0.5 for now. Now if we throw this back in the map again, I know we just deleted it, but um, and then hit play. It's going to be really slow, it's going to arc, and it's going to fall through the world. To prevent it from falling through the world, we need to make it a thing. So I'm going to grab the spear, and I'm going to drag it up over the default scene route, and it's going to be now the default scene route. So we do that. It fell, and it landed right there. Alright, it has collision to it. It's kind of small, but 
and here's the weird thing is we don't really want it to have collision so I'm going to scroll down over here on the details panel and I'm going to find where the collision preset I'm going to go ahead and, and select no collision we just wanted it to have collision and you can see it falls to the world so that's you know how you can change it where where it has that a block all dynamic is going to work for us I think so whenever it, we hit play it just falls to the ground we'll adjust the velocity and gravity and everything here in just a minute we just wanted it to be there in fact for right now we can select the projectile movement let's just go ahead and make it a thousand on velocity on initial and max speed compile and save and we'll come back to this in just a minute let's click on the event graph let's delete everything in here and we want event begin play so whatever the the snowball first comes into the world it's beginning to play that's what that means we're gonna do this and set life span so at first for right now it's just gonna delete itself after three seconds we're gonna come back and do more with it here in just a minute so we did all this this was for our death and damage so I'm gonna hit C for comment block death and damage and change the color to my red color so now whenever I'm looking at my blueprint I can see well where's my death and damage stuff oh well it's death or damage it's in the red there for now let's just do left mouse button we're creating an event so when I press the left mouse button I want to do something in this case I want to spot a projectile and when I press it spawn actor from class and yes we're making a, a snowball fight is what we're essentially doing right now all right it needs to spawn transform so I'm gonna grab my for right now my FPS camera drag it in here and yes it's giving me an error but we're gonna fix that error and we're going to get world transform and plug the orange to the orange alright so now we're spawning that in here we need to select the class which is going to be snowball we can compile and save and now we get rid of our errors so now we're spawning a snowball from our camera in fact let's actually do something a little bit differently let's go to our viewport and make sure nothing is selected here we're going to add a component of a scene we're going to make a scene here so I click on the scene let's drag it in front of our player by 50 and let's go up by 50 so this is our location right here we're gonna spawn it from so instead of our FPS camera let's actually use our scene we don't want it just to be called scene let's give it a name um, snowball spawn So now, from our snowball spawn, we're going to spawn this snowball when we press the left mouse button. You see, it screwed up the scale because in this transform, we have scale. So let's try something a little bit differently here on our, our transform. I'm going to right click on, on here. we want to be able to do something with this so what do we want to do well there's a couple different ways we can go about it but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently here I'm going to break that node drag off from here and we're gonna make transform I'm gonna do it this way so it's more visible um, it's not necessary to do it this way but so you get an idea of what a transform is and what it's doing just want to keep moving this back so I get a little bit more room to work with so location rotation and scale all right 
So for this, we can now drag off from here and break transform. So we can split this information down. We need our location. That's going to be fine. Rotation, that's going to be fine. But our scale, that's where it's getting broken right here. So I'm not going to connect this to that. I'm going to change this to um, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1 so that it remembers, you know, this is our scale that we set it to be and the other thing here. So now when we left click, we can shoot a snowball. And it's going to spawn from that location, no matter where we're looking right here. And now, of course, it's arcing downward. If I turned off the snowball um, and the projectile movement, if I put the gravity scale to zero, it has no gravity whatsoever. It'll just fly straight forever. And it just doesn't look right. You see, it's going to stop when it hits the wall, and it's going to stick to the wall because we haven't told it to do anything else different. So we're going to stack to whatever it was going to. So we want a little bit of gravity to it, so let's give it um, 0.2. That will scale from 0 to 1. So if that's that. We can increase the velocity if we want to. We can decrease the gravity, 0.1, play around with it to, to get it suited to where it suits what you want. So that's good. But it's just going in a straight direction. We can't control where it's going. I mean, if we did this, it's still going to be the same. If we attached it to the first person camera, when we look up, it'll go up. If we look down, it'll go down. But for now, this is going to be good enough. We're just shooting it out in front of us as we're going through. So now, this is not going to be replicated correctly. So if we run two players, new pi, and if we try doing it, our client can see their own snowballs, and the server can see their own snowballs, but they're not replicated, they're not going to hit each other. They're not going to be able to see each other's snowballs. So again, we'd have to run this through an event and run it through a custom event series. So custom event, client, snowball. We're going to multicast that. And we're going to take all this stuff right here and plug it in. Our left mouse button we're going to keep, but we need to run all this stuff from there. So we know that's going to happen. And we just run another custom. Let's call this. Um, Snowball, and we want to run on server. And there, dumbass. Switch has authority. It's giving authority to the client, Snowball. And now when we press left mouse button, we want to fire off the snowball event. Now we can see the um, snowball is coming from the, the player. We can see it's really jerking for the client. And to explain why that is a thing, but the client can see the, um, the snowballs coming from there. Of course, they're just stacking up. So we don't have something else going on here that we need to put into this. We'll come back to that. Um, actually, no, let's leave it there.
and quickly go into our sphere and let's actually add, actually add a component of a sphere collision and even though no get off of there why are you anyway so sphere collision we wanted to set that to be just bigger than our our actual snowball and that's going to be problematic That is the scene root. This is not. I don't want it connected. Yep, sometimes things just don't want to cooperate. So we'll just make that scale of 2. So it's bigger than our actual snowball. So hopefully that didn't break it. So if we yep, still shoot it, no problem. Now, what we want to do here is on our Sphere 2 on component begin overlap. Again, from our other actor, we want to cast it to our player and only our player. Um, we want to apply damage. So we'll connect this to there, and we'll just make it 10 damage. Okay. And at this point, if we don't hit anything, then it's just going to go away after 3 seconds. But in this case right now, we want to destroy Actor. We want to destroy it, the snowball, not the player. But it's already targeting self. If you were to do from the, there, you'd kill the uh, the other player with one 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 thing. We don't want to do that. So we want the snowball to destroy itself whenever it hits another player. You can see our player took health damage. And the snowball went away, and it killed our player. So we just threw a snowball and killed the other player. Now, you notice that it, it kept doing the death animation? It's because we needed to add one thing in here. Variable, variable, variables. We can actually go in here and create a variable system, but we'll save that for another video to where we know that we're we're dead we're in our death sequence and it'll only allow it to to go through one time do once is a node you can use that will just do it one time um, but what we'll do is we'll set a condition and the lovely thing about branch nodes is um, we want a condition of can we die and we use the branch node to say yes or no so we just inject that in here. Now since the snowball is actually spawning in from that snowball spawner, we have no way of directing it other than moving our character around, but it's a start to get us in here to where here's our client, we're hitting our player, it's causing damage, they die, and they respawn. And since we're the server, let's go ahead and kick dude's ass. He dies, and we'll respawn. This is enough to get you go and going. Um, like I said in the next video, we'll actually show some conditional things like stopping it from continuing to do the death animation. We just want to have a way of killing our player. They fall over. They're dead. We're done.
right? So that was it. A simple multiplayer snowball fight um, right off the bat. We'll actually streamline this in another video, but this is enough to get us going with for the first video and our first little taste of what it, um, we're going to have to do to replicate things and get things going. Um, if you guys are interested, um, Mod Papa was inter interested in a project with a first person uh, shooter, non multiplayer, non replicated. Um, what we can do is take a look at one. And all I'm going to do is, it's not going to be multiplayer, so I don't need my multiplayer template. So what I could do is actually come in here and create a new project from here. And it's going to be a first person. And I'm going to call this, you know what, a FPS. Create project and let it do its thing. And since we're going to want some assets to play with later, um, if you guys want to follow along with that video, what I can do here is if you're creating a first person shooter, um, dismiss. Okay, we hit play. We can go in here and we have the projectile that shoots. So we can set up a basic. Um, target system, the target bot that we can actually shoot and kill. Um, but we'll start with this right here. And for assets wise, if you look, we have floating guns, which I hate first person shooter stuff, but we actually have the ability to go in here and we can grab this right here. It's free in the marketplace. FPS assault weapon pack. Uh, you've got an um, M16A2-ish and AK-74 ish and yeah animations to go along with it and so forth um, this is what we're going to use for our FPS add a project BAM we'll throw that in there and for I don't know for other stuff down the line we'll take a look at it but that'll get us started with a project as an FPS shooter. And go to there. And we'll use this this pack right here. And said I, I don't do FPS shooters. I never have. First thing is I hate this freaking mouse cursor. So to get started, go ahead and create you a new project like this with um, that FPS assault pack that's free in the marketplace right now. And then... Um, I'll actually use that for the video itself. The first person character, go into that. And I'm just going to look for the event begin play, which they already have one here. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and move this up, make a little room. And let's go ahead and set input to game mode only. And get a reference for a player controller. And I am going to set show mouse cursor to default. So we don't have that stupid ass mouse cursor when we first start up our project. Compost and save. The only other thing I'm going to do is go to edit, editor preferences, main window, and loading and saving. Disable auto save. All right. So now we hit play. We still have a freaking mouse cursor. Well, let's change that in the game. It's only a problem when you're actually in the uh, the editor. If you actually package out the project and, and you ought to shoot a man. Of course you is. I have never really messed with doing a first person shooter. So we'll take a look at it in the next video. Uh, first part of the video is me doing the, the setup on a uh, multiplayer project. But you know what? 
it intrigues me to do a first person shooter after looking at this project earlier. And you know what? Because uh, everybody loves shooting tennis balls. Of course, my, my, my example for their first part of this video was actually just creating a snowball fight. With replication that works. John, you gotta help me out here. I'm still pissy with that damn sitting in a damn chair. So I'm gonna actually revisit this in another video here in about 30 minutes. Um, me and the, the the chair situation, got it replicating perfectly. Um, you know, checking whether or not somebody is actually in the chair or not. Everything's great. Um, but for some damn reason, I'm, and I'm, I'm leaning towards the fact that it might just be those stupid animations that I've been using. But I mean, I got everything else working. Everything else is great. Go into well. Let's just go into um. No, we'll just use this map. Screw it. Um. Then I'll get out of here. I need to eat something before I do the next video. Um, chair one. All right, so walk over. I don't know, chair seems to be hovering. I have issues with the Cindy characters and the scale and stuff. Oh, yeah, it, it works fine, but in incorporating it with, you know, common logic and stuff. See, the first time I tried to sit down, it didn't work. Second time, I ignore the, the, the chair scale issues. I'm trying to get the character to look right with that. But sit up, you know, sit down, and everything is just fine. But every so often, for some unknown reason, it will absolutely ignore the fact that um, there's script behind the thing, that it's working correctly now. And, of course, it will not fail whenever I need it to. Every so often, it'll just forget that um, it's working, and I go to sit down, and then the character can actually just move around and slide in the uh, the seated position, which it will not fail for hell, whatever I'm trying to show it on the video. It's working perfect every damn time. But I mean, the replication is fine. Detecting whether or not there's somebody in the chair or not. It's fine. Come over here. The first time, it never works. Can never get the other character to sit down. See that time? You see, it broke that time. And the character can slide around. But it doesn't do it every time. And if, you know, somebody else wants to come over and sit down in their lap. They can't. That's working just fine. But for some unknown reason, the um, thing decides it wants to just not work. And see, now it's working perfect. But anytime you, you go in there the first time, the first time you try to sit down on that chair, it will not work. So I come over here, hit E to sit down, nothing happens. Walk away, come back. And I had it hit it twice to get it to work. And see, this time it failed. Right off the bat. Walk back over again. Sit down. It's working perfectly fine. Other than the chair being the wrong scale. So, you know, chair itself. I even tried um, disabling collision on the chair. Thinking maybe there was a collision issue with the chair itself. On begin play, I'm setting the transform and um, setting the static mesh. Yeah, I mean, I got this working perfectly in multiplayer. It replicates perfectly fine, but it's just that, um, you know, all I did was the first thing I did was I checked to see if it's available. If, you know, if you're in that collision box for the entry point, so you just, I need to resize the, the entry box a little bit too, but. Once you're in the entry box, it um, checks to see if it's available. And if it is available, then 
turns off the collision and then sets it to not be available. It sets the chair transform inside the player and then turns on the variable whether it's needed or not at the chair um, so that you actually can do the animation. Then when you walk away it just reverses it. And then in the player when you hit the E it runs the events. And the sit down animation hey what's going on? It asks if you're at the chair which is you know that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't make sense. This should be working perfectly fine. There's no reason why it shouldn't be working. And it only fails every so often for no uh, no known reason. And and I'm sure it's just a sequence also of you know sitting. This is the variable that's going to be called in the um the animation blueprint. Okay. So it's setting it to true here so that you can actually start doing the sit down animation, sit idle, and go from there. You turn off your character movement right there. It's like in the very beginning part. It checks to see if you're at the chair whenever you're you're running this event from pressing E the first time. It sets the value of sitting to true, which begins the animation sequence. It turns off your character movement. Set movement mode to none. It gets the transform of the chair. It sets the actor transform so that it turns the character around and puts their butt towards the chair. Yeah, the the, the first hour of this video was for um, the actual series of doing a, a multiplayer game, starting simple, starting with the basics and that kind of stuff. So this is just kind of picking John's brain real quick of why something is not working that should be working 100%. Um, this is part of my stream in my stream party project, by the way. Switch has authority, um, but why does it fail sometimes and not other times? And why does it not work the first time? You would think that, okay, I'm setting the variable. I should be able to sit down. I have to walk away and come back, and then it works. And it worked perfectly that time. I get up. I said, uh, don't worry about the, the chair scale more than that, but like back and forth, I can come in and sit down, and it works perfect. Every so often, whenever I do it, it just decides it's not going to cooperate at all. That's working just fine. So, that one thing is just bugging the shit out of me. I've gone through every other project that I've done sitting in a chair, and I don't seem to be doing anything wrong. Um, so... It just baffles me to no end of why that's going on. I'll do a quick recap of this project, then I'm going to go eat something, and then come back and I'll play around with that first-person shooter series. Alright, so that's the prison. We can't look at that yet. Um, so yeah, I've put nav, uh, blocking volumes all the way around because... Everybody that's tested so far um, has decided that they're going to walk off the planet. So, temporary map. Um, so far, there's more things that you know are planned, but this is just where we are so far. Chilling fans operational. Haven't put the video in for the TV yet, and for the computer upstairs, I haven't finished doing it yet. See, the chairs are just the wrong scale. They're too high. All of them are. And so that's why I'm having issues of trying to get the scale set correctly on them. So I'm changing a few things around here and there. Um, player phone. Got the animation set up for that, replicating correctly. Um, you press F, you can dance. You can dance if you want to. Um, you can actually go in here and change the dance style change and close it off and you can do a different dance that's replicating correctly um, press F to stop dancing so far the rest of the buildings aren't set up and populated correctly but you can walk across town and decide you want to pick up a mask there is a vendor and store over here on this side of town you walk in and you know, all the widgets are just placeholders for right now 
So you can visibly see all the different type masks here. Um, I'm going to get my paper bag. So you walk over to the vendor, press E, pick which one you want. Let's get the paper bag, free mask, and exit. There we go. And that is replicating correctly. Just to test, when you press the G key, you can see that this player is an admin. So it, it prints admin up on the screen. That's just a debug thing for now. If I don't want to wear my mask, I can go to my phone and turn off the mask, or put it back on, turn it back off, whatever. Um, don't have any money yet. I haven't set up any missions or, or requests for getting money yet. Um, this is not active. The rest of the buttons are, are not active. Um, if you decide that, since you are the admin, again, you can press G key to see what your player status is. The admin, I can go on duty, and I'm the FBI guy. So I can go on duty and find people, and yeah, I've kind of been doing a little bit of that, but fighting all kind of different sicknesses. Yeah, I, I need to turn off that language filter. Everybody gets gig for that. Um, so yeah, you can go on duty or off duty. Um, with the admins, if you click this little circle right here, you get a, a mod maker. The, the, the menus are going to change on the phone, and yes, that's the correct time and the correct date and everything else. Um, turns on what's called a mod maker. You can actually um, use that for promoting somebody else that's a regular player to a moderator status. I'll do a two player here in just a second to show that. And close the phone back up. If I'm on duty, I can actually. I don't remember what the key is now. Um, yeah, as part of the, the goof off mode, um, was testing out this just for the hell of it. <laughs> I just got bored and like, you know what? I'm gonna make a boat race or, or a um, or inflatable raft race. Male characters get the duck, and female characters will get the um, the unicorn. And it'll be an actual race area that's triggered by going into that area, and you can ride around in this. Whenever you come back out of it, you go back into that normal mode. Um, if you're on duty, you can actually teleport to... Um, and this will be actually in the menu instead of just um, a key press for right now. But you've got the... Um, and there'll be more stuff in here, too. Um, the police station with jail cells. So... As you have players that are in here that are getting unruly and being assholes, which is going to happen, um, the admins and moderators can teleport players to jail, and once they put the chat system in, um, their chat will be disabled while they're in jail. And then once they're released from jail, then their chat will return. But it's just a way of dealing with unruly players and just being goofballs, having a prison chairs work in here as well. So let's actually bring up a two-player new pie. So what I'll do here is just kind of demonstrate. Okay, this is our client. So as our client, you press G and it says normal player. So they are in fact a normal player. And if I hit G on the admin or the server or host, it says admin. Now if I go into my phone Actually, let's go into here. If we go in, this button does nothing whatsoever. I can click it all day long, it does nothing. Um, now, I can go into my phone, go into this, and this will all change. Target them, and I left the line trace active. I know that I hit them. And I'm going here and try it back off again. So now, as the, uh, the the client, whenever I hit G, it says moderator. So they are now, in fact, moderator status, so they can actually go on duty. And since they're not the, um, the host, they're a moderator, they get the police uniform. And I do need to fix the, um, the thing here. For some reason, it's not letting the moderators teleport to the jail area. Whereas the, um, the host, when they're on duty, they can teleport, they hit it again, they can teleport back, but for some reason it is not working and I will fix it. 
It was weird. Just, you, you notice that um, in that little blur, you can see that the um, the original player mesh is actually showing up. So I just need to change the variables on it so that it, uh, it'll actually go there. And so doing the phone, change the dance. We'll get him twerking. Change. And if we look, we can see them twerking. And this dude will change it over to Gangnam Style. So the dancer are, are working correctly. It's having some issues with that as well. And we'll stop our client from dancing. But you can still see, though, that they are a moderator. And if they go on duty, they can change their, their clothes to that and hit one again. Uh, a little bit at a time. As I'm getting free time, I'm actually making some progress with it. And we'll go in here. We'll get the luchador. No, damn it. Let's park your ass outside so we can see it. And we'll get back on home, dude. Quit dancing. It might as well. <laughs> And we can see he's using the luchador. And we can see our character is in this stupid mode. So I go in here and I pick up a mask. And this was a pain in the ass to get all this right. Um, let's be a panda. So we can see their mask. And I can see our mask. And there was much rejoicing. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at on this project. Um, the uh, cosmetic vendor for the masks and stuff like that. Nice, simple looking little nothing widget, but holy crap. Um, yeah, I'll worry about that later. It was just kind of low on the food chain. Um, on selection on the, uh, the the combo box for this combo box getting all the stuff set up in there <laughs> to get it to work correctly with the replication I had to actually make it set a variable here before I actually went through on you know getting the mask I need to change the mask that we own in our character and then to actually wear it you don't have to do that but I created it separately Oh, I didn't think about that, yeah. That was, uh, hiding the bone. I won't talk about hiding the bone. I've been single for too long. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had to create a change owned mask and wear mask separately because I wanted to be able to put the mask on and off separately. Um, but yeah, having to set up this, I already had the um, the structure made for all the different hat names and so forth. Um, and for what they actually are, you know, the, the mesh form. Um, so yeah, I had to go through all that for all those different options for all the frickin' different masks. So that I can go into the character and... The float mask vendor. So yeah, when you press E and talk to the vendor, that's one thing. Um, changing the mask, that's all there is to it. Um, and making sure that you have the mask. Wear mask, remove mask, you get all the different custom events for that. So, and everything replicated. It, it works now, but it, it took a while of playing around with it back and forth to get it to replicate correctly for uh, doing all that. I'll just go back here and the next thing I'm going to fix is the um, the ability for the moderators to come in here and then set up the function for sending people to jail, setting up sentences and shit like that. One little thing at a time. 
just, that chair is bugging the crap out of me. Did it work? No. Failed that time. But then, it worked perfectly this time. But while you're sitting, I need to run variables so that I can disable the fact of teleporting. And, yeah. I just gotta go back through and do a lot of cleanup stuff here and there. Did not work. Did and now you worked incorrectly. Did not work correctly. And you work correctly this time. The chair thing is just gonna beat my brains to death. So I can get up. He said, I will put something on the TV screen. But one thing at a time, like I said, there's just a lot of things that I need to work on. The collisions for the frickin' pool. Um, the little pool. The big pool had collision issues. Um, as much as I love the Cindy stuff, there's a lot of collision issues back and forth. Oh, and... For more of the dumb shit, the football, you walk over it and you can actually throw the football. And of course it despawns after a couple seconds. I tried to set it up to where it would hit the ground and bounce and be able to pick up back and forth. But I need to go in there and reset the pivot point because the pivot point's wrong on the football. So that it sits perfectly and neatly on the ground. The pivot point's not in the middle and if you set it so that um, yes I wanted to have it spin and despawn I want to set it up to where it, it spins correctly so I'm gonna to have to change that pivot point on it so that it will spin correctly and then I can actually make it to where it actually hits the player and stuff so this one unfortunately to get this pool to work correct the collisions were absolutely wrong here didn't work and didn't work correctly I can tell by the way he's sitting on top of it didn't work and didn't work correctly not working not working correctly it's the same damn chair it's just a different mesh now it's working correctly and of course the mesh is wrong um, because the way I've got a chair set up for right now, so that I don't have to have a, me uh, a blueprint for each damn one of them, is you can actually change the um, the mesh here. And in this, we take that out. Initially, was just using my old old way of doing it of having it set to where no chair mesh at all is needed and if I want to put a chair mesh in anywhere I put it in which you can't see the damn thing just gonna turn it on but you could put anything there and make it into a sitable area It's going to turn around the correct way, but well, that was the point, was making it to where it's the same deal. To where you can sit down on anything. I, I'll probably go through 15 different methods of fixing this stupid um, chair blueprint. But that was the whole thing was um, why I wanted it to not have a mesh in there at all so that I could just create anything as a chair. But it did not work. And I hit it twice and then it didn't work correctly. Not working. Not working correctly. And yeah. Now it's working correctly. Yeah, 
that's that's my conundrum right now, trying to fix that messed up shit. Before I worry about fixing the animations or anything else. I just didn't know if there was, maybe there was a problem with the animation that's causing that, or the reason why I did the make the mesh invisible or turn off the collision for it. Didn't know if that might have been an issue, so that's why I tried that route. Didn't help. For once, all my replication's correct, but just that one little thing. And I think it's that sit-down. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is going to Mixamo and setting up some new animations. All right. I'm going to get out of here, take my break for a little bit, and then when I come back, I will... See about converting those weapons over and arms over to... Uh, for a non-multiplayer, single-player, first-person shooter... Throw some bots in here and that kind of stuff. Which I'll have to add the third person stuff in here as well. Um, any character capsule? Alright. I didn't think about that either. Um, go back to build map. Open. Uncheck hidden in game. All right, so did not trigger the um, the thing. It's not sitting. To so walk away, come back, and sitting correctly this time. So, the capsule collision is, you know, it's there. It's partially going inside the chair. This one um, doesn't do anything with the, um, the static meshes, actually. So, I thought it was a thing of between static mesh and um, skeletal mesh. They don't like to be next to each other. And it causes all kind of weird, dumb shit to happen. I'm going to stand up. Sit down, working perfectly fine. You can see his butt sitting there and things just right. And works fine. But it's working every time right now. It's working perfectly fine. It just didn't work the first time. But now it's working perfectly every time they come over here and, and sit down. Yes, yeah, but it's it's working, even though it's it it's hitting. We saw the other time when I ran it, it just was not working at all. See, it's working perfectly fine every time. Now, see, it just failed. See how his butt sitting in there. The capsule is now in front of it, and his butt's still kind of on it, but I can tell by the way he's sitting that it failed. See? Stand up. Walk back over. Sit down. It's working, but why did it fail that one time? And now it's back working normal again. I hit the button three times, and then it, it failed this time. You can see that it's it's not sitting correctly. But that time it worked correctly. Maybe I'm hitting the key sideways. I don't know. I mean, the capsule is actually going into the mesh of the, uh, the cube. It's just a plain cube that's sitting there. I could put a chair mesh in there. It would do the same thing. Um... That's still a static mesh, you know, one way or the other. But why is it working m most of the time, but then sometime just failing? That it yeah, worked just fine. I could sit down a hundred times, and there's no rhyme or reason. Like it's working perfectly fine. Capsule sticking through, uh, but it's it's working. The time that it fails, you can see that it just shoots out the capsule collision. 
what about if I took those same um, animations and I'm just using animations and not montages but uh, because I'm running it through the animation blueprint so what if I were to take the root of the animation and instead of it being right there at the feet change it to where it's um see I had to hit the button like three or four times and now it failed the root of the animation is going to be just right there at the feet actually it's just below the feet see I know that it's wrong this time that's why the feet are hovering over the ground so assuming that it is just the animation is foobar It worked perfectly fine that time. The, um, there was one of the animations that the root was completely wrong, so that's why it was jumping forward like in quite a bit. And I think it was um, sit to stand. The root of the animation was actually look at it now. Sorry, I'm kind of flying all over the damn place. If I actually take that root and move it up to a certain point, it starts moving the character, but. the root was actually out here so when they were standing up it was causing the character to slide forward and then back so I had to change the root of the animation um, I should be sure that it's correct let's key and apply and save now it's just gonna stay right there and be fine and all of them the the root of the animation See, it did not work, so I walk away, come back, and I had, had to hit the button twice, and then it failed. So you can see it failed. You see now the animation, whenever I play it, see it worked perfectly fine just on. See, he slides down a little bit. Yeah, it's fine. When you watch the sit to stand animation, he sinks down a little bit, so I'm going to have to move that root back up again. So again, I thought it was just these animations that were causing all the issues. Um, so in theory, the root should be right there. Shouldn't be any elevation to it whatsoever. Key, apply, save, close, damn you. Didn't work walk away come back didn't work so I had to hit the key twice and it failed so I stand up walk away come back to it sit down it's working perfectly stand up and doop. and worked so you know it's just one of those enigmas Um, I think I still got it in here. I'm getting ready to reinstall Windows, so I'm going to lose everything that I haven't got archived. That one never worked correctly. That one, um, I thought I still had it in here. This was another one that I was doing.
So hit the button, it worked. Get up, no problem. Same animations, by the way. Let's hit this chair, no problem. No problem. No problem. I had all the stuff going on here, like disabling views and things like that too, but um but yeah, just set setting to true. I'll even run a flip flop without doing I don't even know if this was correctly replicated. Probably not. Um So client Holy hell. Okay. <laughs> lot less going on in this version of it but it doesn't have the check to see if it's available or not um, and see this is just a sit spot that's all I did I deactivated the entry point um, and that actually doesn't work by the way um, if you're trying to disable a box collision you actually have to turn off collision, which I didn't do on the other one. So the deactivate and reactivate does not actually work. Um, maybe. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe. Um, I, I know activate and deactivate does not work for box collisions. Um, you actually have to turn off the... Um, the collision so it would be um, that um, so you actually disable the collision and then re-enable it whenever you get back up um, so when you leave it, you re-enable the collision on, on that chair. I, I could have just broken everything, but... So, client, come over here. Yeah, I just broke it. Um, set is available. Um... I don't think that was actually the problem. Undo what it just did. I don't get it. Um, yeah, I'd, I'll go back in there and, and try tweaking it back over this way. Because this seems to be working correctly. I haven't seen any failures yet. <laughs> I just have no idea why it, something that simple is what, what gets me. <laughs> okay. Well, this works. I'll just leave this up, and then I'll go back and correct the other one later. We know that that guy works. All right. So, um, like I said, working with this stuff right here, I've never messed with first-person shooters, first-person animations, that kind of crap. Maybe five minutes worth. 
Um, because everything that I work on usually is going to end up as being multiplayer and cooperative or or what have you. It's nice that this works. You can create bots and shit like that. You know, add new third person. So you actually can create a uh, a bot to work with, something to, to target. One thing that people always forget when they're trying to create something for their character to, to shoot somebody or whatever is you go to your mesh, scroll down, change your collision preset from character mesh to block all dynamic. That way when you hit somebody with a projectile then it will remember that oh yeah I can do something now. Otherwise the um, hitting the player does nothing. So when you actually create a, um, I hate these formats in a new folder. Blueprints. Third person. Throw that in here. Create a test bot. Don't need any of that crap. So, something to shoot at. So now, you can hit him and bounce off. Create an event for when a projectile actually like hits. Otherwise, the projectile would have just gone right through and not done anything. Alright, do those bullets have a lifespan? Yeah, they do. Okay. I'm not going to keep them anyway, but... Alright, that's a starting point. Um, like I said, I'll come back and I'll do another video uh, just on this stuff. Um, yeah, let me get out there and go get something to eat and get about 30 minutes. I'll start up another stream here and screw around with a first person shooter. I said, I've never done it before. And since the FPS assault pack with weapons and arms and everything else is in here, um, why not? It's free for the month. Oh, goody, there's just like that sitting there. Okay, that's just a preview asset. Okay. Gun socket. Oh, I always love trying to make other people's shit work. But, whatever. So you got arms, you got a couple weapons to work with, you got animations that are associated with the rifles, and a reload animation. Not bad, except for this is, um... Detachable carrying handle. It's not a true M16A2. It's an A3 or A4, rather. I hate those detachable carrying handles. Either have a damn carrying handle or don't. If you want a flat top, use a flat top. What's the point of having that? If you're going to have that, you might as well have a freaking fold up um, sight. Um, but you got all these different animations. Eh, we'll see. Um,. Test something really quickly. Um, do they create their own game mode? Yes. And it didn't change because I hate also when you throw that. Get the hell out of here. No sound. Yeah, starting point. And you also got the um, other character. Die! 
So, yeah, we'll play around with it. Like I said, this is all new to me. I, I, I like being able to see my feet when I look down. And there's another thing that I really, really don't like is why the hell do you leave your shadows on? When you look down, you want to see your shadows of just your frickin' arms? That's so stupid. Um, so, BP rifle character... Uh, I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And then actually show what I do on, on the other video. That way you, you've actually got... Shells kicking out, you got muzzle flash, you got recoil. Yeah, yeah, we'll actually see if something else can work. We'll we'll play with it in the other video. I'm gone. Love you guys. See you in a little bit.